Greetings, members of the FOMC. To cut rates or not to cut rates, that's the question. An answer in spite of uncertainty. We have a lot on the agenda, so let's get right into it. We will start with examining the current endogenous macroeconomic snapshot of the United States. We will then assemble the components of the economy and forecast monetary policy implications on the industries pictured below. And finally, we will answer the question to cut rates or not to cut rates. Let's get into it. Starting by examining the current conditions through the dual mandate lens of the Federal Reserve, it is important to see just the state of everything. The unemployment rate right now is great at 4.2%, and the CPI, or measure of inflation, has been brought under control, reaching 2.59%. This is all thanks to the use of the Fed funds rate and contractionary monetary policy. Let's dive a little bit deeper. Examining inflation a little bit more closely with the PCE data, or personal consumption expenditures, is consistent with the previous CPI data. And this shows that the Federal Reserve has been extremely effective in reducing inflation across both measures. Really amazing to see. Continuing on to examining what constituted that large increase in the CPI, we can see that it's largely attributable to food, electricity, and rent. Uh, with the CPI spiking at 622 at 9.2%, however, now it's reached an acceptable level of 25 to 2.9%. However, this recent success uh, does not negate the now elevated price levels from that large spike in CPI growth. The acute effects of this are the chief concern among average American consumers. This is also further exacerbated by regular price increases done at the firm level, which is being investigated by the FTC. Continuing on to examining the other side, wage growth, we can see that wage growth also spiked at 622, but only at 5.7%, not reaching the same highs as the CPI. This has created an inequality between income growth and price level growth, which is acutely affecting American consumers. I know I feel it when I go to the grocery store. Now, putting the two sides of the coin together, we can see in this graph, which shows the CPI, the PCE, and the five-year inflation rate as measured through treasury bonds, uh, along with personal income growth. We can see that while the CPI and PCE did grow substantially, it is also accompanied with a not as large growth in personal income, which is consistent with the experiences of most consumers. However, with the effective use of monetary policy, the CPI and PCE were brought under control, and personal income growth has eclipsed that of the PCI. However, this has not equalized itself as of yet. Continuing on to examining the other side of the dual mandate goal of the Federal Reserve, we can see that unemployment has remained quite stable throughout this entire period. Um, this is inconsistent with the Phillips curve, which postulates that while inflation is reduced, unemployment rises. This is not what the data shows, and uh, that's just the bottom line. So there has to be something else going on at play here. When we look at unemployment across demographics, we can see uh, average expected results. Nothing really surprising here. So what's going on in the labor market? That is explained through the beverage curve. The beverage curve is a great indication of the consequences of contractionary monetary policy. While the current job market is tight and the economy is growing since the job opening rate is greater than the unemployment rate at 4.8% being greater than 4.2%, it is not at the same highs that were at March 22 with the job opening rate at 7.4% and the unemployment rate at 3.6%. This is where the effects of contractionary monetary policy are really being shown, not so much in the straight unemployment rate, which is at the natural rate. And this is consistent with um, the current situation. Continuing on, we can see that this graph really shows um, how cutting the Fed's fund rate would increase and help the job market. 
with the employee employment population ratio, the Fed funds rate, the unemployment rate, and the change in job openings being graphed right here. We can see that from January 2021 all the way through to uh, around the increase of the Fed funds rate uh, that the job opening rate was actually growing. And this is consistent with the beverage curve results. However, after the Fed funds rate started increasing, uh, the job opening rate started going down. And we can see that through more of the curve being in the negative than uh, before that increase in the Fed funds rate. Thus, uh, cutting the Fed funds rate would increase job openings. And this is consistent with the beverage curve. Continuing on to the financial markets, equities versus bonds, this again shows the impact of the heightened Fed funds rate uh, as S&P 500 earnings minus uh, Treasury bond yields shows a, an, inverse, an inverting around uh, January 2022, which is pretty consistent with the start of the increase of the Fed funds rate as that uh, bond yield curve uh, compared to the S&P goes negative, showing that bonds are favored. Of course, cutting the Fed funds rate would decrease bond yields, leading to equities being more attractive and uh, better growth in that sector. Continuing on to the financial markets uh, across sectors, we can see some uh, very important data on how the economy is growing and in which direction. Uh, some big ones that I want to point out are, of course, the energy sector, the IT sector, the utilities, industrials, uh, and real estate, just to name a few. Uh, those are very important to monitor. And uh, as you can see, the Fed funds rate has definitely had an impact on their growth. Continuing on to GDP growth, we again see a dip in gross domestic private investment, um, which is the orange bar around the time of the increases in the Fed funds rate. Uh, however, this has kind of normalized in more recent times, um, as I believe the Consumers are expecting rate cuts. Moving on to GDP, this shows a much more stable picture as the United States is still a net importer and just shows a breakup of the GDP, which is important in understanding the current macroeconomic situation. Continuing on to the housing market, we see that uh, the 30 year fixed mortgage rate did increase with the increase of the Fed funds rate along with a decrease in the amount of mortgage-backed securities held by commercial banks. This is again <laughs> consistent with the increased bond yields uh, that come with the increase in the uh, Fed funds rate. Of course, once again, we do see those mortgage-backed securities um, growth going up as banks are choosing to hold more of them. This is because the delinquency rates are historically low uh, the lowest since 2006 at 1.73%, showing that the housing market is healthy and quite low risk. Um, so that is, again, uh, something that's being done as the banks are anticipating cuts in the Fed funds rate. They're moving to a slightly higher yield, um, long-term, low-risk asset. Again, cutting the Fed funds rate would bring down mortgage rates, increase mortgage-backed securities holdings, and which would result in a stronger housing market along with expanded investment in housing. Continuing on to manufacturing, uh, the PMI input and output price graph, which we have right here, uh, shows the input side shocks and price level increases for inputs that manufacturing uh, and industrial sectors are currently dealing with. Uh, this is a supply side issue, and that's evident because the PMI output prices have not been uh, following consistently with the input prices in that narrow portion of 2024. If it was demand-based, then we would expect to see both of them following uh, in tandem completely. However, that's not quite the case, which indicates that these are supply side price increases and price shocks. Despite this, the uh, index still indicates that there is uh, economic expansion in the sector because it's greater than 50. However, there's a lot of room for improvement. Cutting the Fed fund rate, of course, would reduce the stress on firms to finance already rising input costs, leading to a healthier and uh, better manufacturing sector. Continuing on to the tertiary sector or the services sector, 
uh, which is a majority of the PCE, uh, 68% to be more precise, it again would benefit from cuts in the Fed funds rate. However, this is a little bit more uh, hard to pin down and hard to gauge because the this sector is quite uh, diverse and complex, and uh, that makes it particularly difficult to engage. However, we do see that it is following in tandem with the standard PCE, partially because it does make up 68% of that uh, metric. So, of course, seeing a decrease in the PCE, of course, we'll see a decrease in services as well, which is good to see. Moving on to agriculture, which is a critical industry, we, we can see the effects of the rise in the Fed funds rate quite acutely with um, average interest rates across all um, production inputs reaching 24-year record highs around 8 to 9 percent. This is just really, really in quite large. Um, yeah, thus uh, the high price of financing the production of agricultural goods across all the imports or inputs has contributed to the uh, aforementioned food prices increases in the CPI. Continuing on to loan volume and amount, we also see a pretty rough story here as well as uh, the drop in loan volume is extremely significant as well as a drop in loan size in large banks who have over 25 million in uh, farm loans. This, is, uh, this just shows you how critical the situation is for agriculture. Continuing on, uh, we have this quote from the Economic Research Service Services uh, Department of the USDA showing that um, interest expenses are the fastest growing production expense for 2023 at $34.9 billion. That's a lot. Um, of course, cutting the fence fund rate would have an amazing impact on the agricultural center, relieving a lot of stress um, on the industry. Again, just to show how tight and how close these uh, interest rates are to the Fed funds rate. We have the current um, farm loan interest rates over here offered by the Farm Service Agency. And uh, yeah, they're, they're neck and neck. Continuing on to supply side shocks with um, oil and energy shocks, we can see that the price of oil and energy across the board is down. Uh, it is clear that the shocks from the Ukraine war and Middle East conflicts are being adjusted for and are no returning to more normal levels. It's also important to note this because some of that inflation is probably caused from these oil uh, shocks. Uh, historically, the U.S. economy has been very, very sensitive to oil shocks, particularly with the 1973 and 1979 oil shocks, uh, respectively, having a pretty severe impact on the U.S. economy and inflation. Continuing on to another supply side shock, we have the shipping strikes, both done by the Houthi rebels and dock workers. Uh, again, this is another supply side input shock, uh, raising price levels. Uh, this should return to normal. However, it's important to monitor it to ensure that it will return to normal without monetary intervention. Continuing on to the Federal Reserve open market operations, particularly the portfolio, we can see that the portfolio is currently um, undergoing quantitative uh, tightening as they are selling their bonds and uh, longer term mature assets, switching to uh, more uh, short term assets as the portfolio um, adjusts. You can also see the quantitative easing done during the pandemic with the spike in uh, bond holdings, particularly around 2020. Continuing on to the downward pressure force of the portfolio on bonds, uh, this just shows kind of how undervalued bonds are currently and uh, the appreciation effect that will probably happen with uh, the reverse repo facility, which is something to be uh, mildly concerned about as those overnight assets might appreciate. Uh, continuing on to the interest rate impact further on the effects of the um, open market operations portfolio, we can see uh, from the graph on the left just the uh, impact of that valuation as new bonds are um, less valuable than the higher rate bonds and also the impact of the Federal Reserve on bond rates. Note that uh, interest rates have already dropped by half a percentage point since the graph was made. Continuing on to exogenous risks, 
We have the coming presidential election and uh, future economic policy uncertainty with respect to trade. We also have the continued conflict in the Middle East and rising tensions in the South China Sea, which uh, could expand current supply side input costs. While these would still be shocks, they're important to recognize and anticipate in the event that monetary policy is required. Uh, Chinese real estate pressures alongside other global financial defaults and delinquencies are important to recognize as well, along with the effects of artificial intelligence increasing both energy prices and potentially structural unemployment. Continuing on to a complete review, uh, cutting the Fed funds rate across the board is uh, really the right move. It would help with the job market, it would help with the mortgage rates, it would help with the agriculture for sure, um, the financial markets, and pretty much everything, all the data shows that a rate cut is in order. Uh, another thing to note, while not particularly impactful in the US, it is worth noting that the European marginal lending facility rate is at 3.9% compared to the current US Fed funds rate of 4.8%, which does indicate a global uh, trend of reducing interest rates. So back to the big picture, we have unemployment at 4.2%, the natural rate, we have inflation at 2.2%, and we have GDP growth at 3%. This shows that stability in the primary targets were achieved, which necessitates encourage expansion, which leads to naturally cutting rates. We believe that cutting rates 50 basis points is the right move at the next uh, FOMC meeting. Some of the endogenous risks of cutting the Fed funds rate includes increasing inflation and overheating the economy, Trade trades defaulting, then cascading through the market. However, um, I believe that half a percent uh, really would not um, do this immediately. But it's still worth noting, along with uh, reducing confidence through unpredictable, aggressive uh, monetary policy changes. This is a worthwhile concern, uh, along with lagged effects adversely impacting the economy in the future. Uh, final review and recommendations shows that uh, decreasing the federal funds rate appears to be the correct decision based on all the macroeconomic data across uh, long run and short run analysis of relevant markets and industries. Uh, inflation and unemployment are at textbook rates, which demonstrates that the dual mandate goals of the Federal Reserve have been achieved through their contractionary monetary policy, and that further contractionary monetary policy is no longer required and will only stifle economic growth and harm the labor market. This is supported by um, both the beverage curve, the Phillips curve, and all the industries across the board. The lack of an FOMC meeting in October supports the decision to cut rates by 50 basis points in the November meeting, as uh, there's no opportunity to do 25 and 25 uh, with October and November. In conclusion, the Federal Reserve should continue to cut rates and induce an economic growth. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed.